This is Jonas from vhdlwist.com. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of how delta cycles can cause a mismatch between your simulation and the implemented design. Here I have a small module which I have created, which is supposed to toggle a LED light. It's going to blink a LED. And this is the entity of the module. It has two signals, an input and an output. The input is the clock signal. And the output is a signal named LED1, which is going to be connected to the LED light. Down in the architecture, the LED1 signal is assigned to from a internal copy of the LED1 signal, which is named LED1 underscore I. I am using an internal copy of the LED signal because down here I'm going to toggle it and then we have to read it and we cannot read outputs directly in VSGL. So I'm using an internal copy and simply assigning it to the output. On the next line, I am copying the clock signal to a new signal named clock underscore copy. So the clock underscore copy signal will always follow the clock that arrives through the entity input and they will be completely in sync, at least in the time domain. The next two lines are actually two processes. These are shorthand process notations. The first one uh, will increment the counter one signal by one whenever a rising edge of the clock happens. So on each rising edge of clock, the counter one signal will be incremented by one. Line number two here does the same thing only with the counter two signal. But this uh, process is not sensitive to the original clock, it's sensitive to the copied clock. The, you remember, those two should be completely in sync. The last process is the one that actually toggles the LED light. It is also a clocked process, and it's also sensitive to the clock underscore copy, the copied clock. On the rising edge of the clock, uh, this line will be evaluated and if the counter one signal is zero and the counter two signal is also zero, then the LED output will be toggled. So if it's zero, it's going to be one. And if it's one, it's going to be zero. And this is going to happen every time uh, the counter one and counter two signals uh, wrap around to zero again. And this will happen about every uh, 1.4 seconds because I, I will run this design at 12 megahertz and these counters are 24 bits wide therefore they are going to wrap once every 1.4 seconds. I've had this nice little FPGA board, uh, the lattice ice stick laying around in my drawer for quite some time. So I thought it would be nice to implement this design on this uh, USB uh, FPGA de development board. So I, I did just that. Using the Lattice Ice Cube 2 software, which comes with the ice stick, I assigned the clock input to a clock source and the LED output to a LED pin. And I synthesized and routed the design and generated the bit file, which I used the Lattice Diamond programmer to program the Lattice Ice Stick with. And then when I plug in the USB power, let's see what happens then. LED starts to blink. It's working. It's blinking with about uh, 1.4, it's, it's toggling with about 1.4 seconds delay. So this design is actually working on the lattice eye stick. Now the problem is, if I go into model sim and try to simulate, the, simulate this design, I've already compiled it here with a test bench. The test bench uh, instantiates this module the delta cycles module, which I call it, and it gives it a clock signal, which is equal to the one on the lattice eye stick. So it, that's all it does. If I try to simulate the design for three seconds, which should give it enough time to blink the LEDs, what happens? It doesn't work. The LED output is not toggling, it's, nothing happens to it. And also the internal LED output is not working. Counters, however, they are counting and they seem to be in sync. 
So this makes not too much sense. If you want to know why this happens, go to the video description and click the link to get to the blog post that accompanies this video. Thank you for watching and keep coding.